All right, good morning, computer science students. I hope everyone is doing well. This video is all about how to make and use a code tracing chart. So when you're programming, in really any programming sense, but especially in make code, there will a lot of times be errors or what we call bugs in your program. And so we use this little chart to help find and crush the bugs. So for example, here is a code on make code. And we can read right here in this comment what this code is supposed to do. And it says, this program blinks a light on and off forever. Let's run it here, and it's when we press the A button. Okay, so we press that A button and you'll notice that light's never turning off. It's supposed to blink on and off forever. So we know there's a bug in here somewhere. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a code tracing chart like this one, which I have here in your assignment for the week, but this can be anytime you need to do a code tracing chart. This could be a helpful video, okay? Um, we are going to fill this uh, code tracing chart out. So the first thing you need to do is get a nice clean screenshot of your program. And the way to do that is you just kind of position your mouse over here in this blank canvas area. And you can right click if you're using a mouse or if you're using the Chromebook and do a little two finger on the touchpad trick. Okay, and we're going to snapshot. And you'll notice here, it downloads a screenshot of this code right here to my downloads folder. So what I'm able to do is I'm able to show this in the folder and it should pop up somewhere. It popped up on my projector screen, which is where you guys can't see it, but you don't need to see it anyway. I can go to my Google Doc here. You're good to go in there, okay? And then I can click and drag my micro bit screenshot right in here and it will insert, okay? Now what I need to do, and I'm gonna show you this process. It's a little bit tedious or repetitive, but it's gonna be very helpful for you in the long run, especially as you get into more complicated programs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy, Control C, and we're gonna paste this into every single extra box here. So there's one copy in each box. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna actually trim every single one of these copies down so it just has one line of code. So every box will just have one line. Now to do that on Google Docs, if you see up here in the top toolbar, there's this little object that looks like kind of corners going together. That's the crop image tool. So I click that and you'll notice these little bars pop up on my picture. And I'm just gonna click and position those little bars right to where I want them and hit the enter key. Okay, and now that that has been cropped down to one line of code. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna try to go fast for the sake of the video. This might be something I edit out. Okay, now here we are and you'll notice our whole block of code has been cut up so that each line or block is in its own box. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through this line by line and break it down, okay? So this first line, on A button pressed, what does it do? Well, it starts the program when you press the A button, okay? Is that something we want to happen? Yes or no? In this case, yes it is, so we're just gonna type yes. If that's something we want to happen, we just leave it, okay? The next line, this is a while true Okay, and what this does is it's just a forever loop. It just makes this loop forever. As long as true equals true, just keep looping. And guess what? True always equals true. True never equals false. So it's just gonna loop forever. So this, we can just put loop forever. Now, is that something we want to happen? Let's go check the comment and see. Okay, this program blinks a light on and off. Oh, uh, yep, forever. So this is correct. Next, pause, 500 milliseconds. So we're gonna pause for 0.5 seconds, okay? Is that something we want? In this case, yes it is. We do want it to pause when it's off. Then, this block turns on the LEDs, okay? Right, show LEDs, it turns them on. Is that something we want? Yes, we want the lights to turn on, okay? And then, we pause again for 0.5 seconds, which is good, we want that to happen, okay? Because we want the light to be off, Turn on and then stay for half a second. Turn off and stay for half a second. Now an important thing to notice here that we need to notice is the loop ends. So I'm actually gonna put in parentheses right here. Loop ends here, okay? Is this correct? Yes, yeah, that is correct. That's what we want, okay? The very last thing we have is our clear screen, which just turns the lights off. And we're gonna put in parentheses right here, program ends. Now is this correct? Well, we do want the lights to turn off, but our issue here is, is that our clear screen isn't inside the loop. 
So what we're getting is just this loop of pausing, turning on, pausing, pausing, turning on, pausing, pausing, turning on, and the light just stays on. It never turns off because it never gets to this loop. So what we need to do in our correct box here is we actually need to say no, the clear screen command needs to be in the loop. So you'll notice anytime that I put a yes, I didn't have to elaborate or give more detail, but anytime that I write a no, I need to give more detail, right? I need to say what's wrong. So that way I can go and actually fix it. So if I go to make code, I know where my error is now, okay? I can actually take this clear screen, put it up inside the loop, and let's see if it works. Press the A button. Look at that, on and off. And it's gonna go forever. We don't need to sit here and make sure it goes forever. It'll go, okay? So our problem is solved. Now you might say, wow, that was a very tedious process for a pretty simple program that I could have just solved myself very quickly. Um, and yeah, it is sometimes. But if you get in the habit of using code tracing charts like this and going line by line, when you have a very complicated program with multiple decisions and multiple uh, sensors and actuators, you're gonna be able to solve problems a lot easier, okay? So don't get impatient with it. Trust the process and go through it. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. You can email me or comment on Google Classroom, and uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.